Hi you guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Chaney and I'm a homeschooling mom of three kids ages 11, 4, and 10 months. And today I'm going to share with you everything I'm going to be using for our ancient history this year. Uh, some of these things that you're going to see are making an appearance in some other videos. However, I decided to keep them all here just for the sake of if you were looking to build a unit study, everything here could all work on its own. So we are doing other things this year, but just in case this is the only video you stumble across or you're trying to build a unit study of um, ancient history where you don't need anything else, I decided to put it all right here in one video. So a little bit of backstory about me and history curriculum. I tried to use the Good and the Beautiful's history curriculum years ago when I first started homeschooling and I it's the only thing from the good and the beautiful that I just could not use it just didn't work with our worldview it didn't mesh with me I didn't like how choppy it was as far as like jumping all over the place through the year I thought I would really like it and I didn't and so what I ended up doing was uh, building my own unit studies around different areas of history that my kids are interested in and so this will be my first year actually using a curriculum again and as you can tell I'm not accustomed to it. I'm, I'm more used to building on whatever it is that we're interested in. So I'm going to try this curriculum. I'll let you know towards the end of the year how I actually feel about it. But the curriculum that I chose this year is Curiosity Chronicles Snapshots of Ancient History. From what I've seen of this curriculum I really really love it. Um, I will let you know towards the end if it works out as good as in my head I picture it working it out, um, but it's very adaptable from what I can tell. It's built for you to do with it what you will, uh, and if you use it at its bare minimum, um, you know, you're just getting a little bit, maybe five minutes of history every week. If you use it to its max, it's a full unit study that could probably last, I don't know, three or four months if you did nothing else. So um, I'll try to do my best to tell you which books are recommended by Curiosity Chronicles and like part of the curriculum and which ones I found myself. Unfortunately, I don't buy all my books and curriculum at one time. I do it over, I've been buying all of this over the course of six months. So, sorry <laughs> if I say something wasn't part of it and it was or that it was part of it and it wasn't. I'm, I'm going to do my best. Um, but the first thing that you're going to get when you get Curiosity Chronicles is this textbook. Um, and I'll show you a little bit of the inside of it. The biggest thing, I had watched videos of people reviewing this before I purchased it and the biggest thing that surprised me when I actually got it is how big it is. It doesn't, I don't know if it's a trick of the camera, it doesn't look like it's this big <laughs> on in videos, but it's actually, it's it's a textbook. It's, you know, it's, it's a pretty large book. Um, you know, I don't, I don't know how to compare size, but it's a pretty big textbook. And each lesson inside the textbook is going to be this dialogue. Uh, here, I'll show you to sort of. History is cool. Humans start hunting and gathering. Mesopotamia starts farming. Egypt gets united. Sumer starts inventing. The Indus Valley builds cities. Egypt prepares for the afterlife. Egypt builds pyramids. Britain builds megaliths. You fights the river. Um, Austronesia sets sail and Babylon makes laws. Hatshepsut builds wonders. King Tut lives, leaves a mystery. India writes the Vedas. The Zhao make a mandate. Assyria makes a war. The Greeks sing of heroes. The Olmec play ball. Persia builds an empire. Buddha becomes enlightened. China debates ideas. The Greeks fight Persia. Athens invents democracy. The Greeks get inventing. Alexander goes conquering. Ashaka has a change of heart. Rome starts with blood. China is united. The Hun build an empire. Caesar takes over. Augustus rules the empire. Rome becomes Christian. India starts an empire. The Mayans chart the sky and Rome falls apart. So, 
it's a pretty big chunk of history that it snapshots its way through. We go from humans start hunting and gathering all the way to the fall of Rome. Uh, so the way some people do this, it's probably not the way I'm going to do it just because I'm going to try to keep my life a little simple, is that each section is colored at the top and it's color coded based on like what geographical area you're in. So a lot of people will go through and do all the green and then all the red and all the blue, you know, just to stay in Egypt or to stay in uh, China. I probably won't do that. And so this is told through a dialogue between Ted and Mona uh, and they talk back and forth and it's mostly, uh, from what I've heard, it's mostly Mona telling Ted about things that happened in history. Uh, it comes with an audiobook, which I did purchase. I thought about having us read it aloud, but I read so much aloud already. I thought it couldn't hurt to have an audiobook to just play uh, while we look at the, you know, the maps and the pictures and such. Also, this picture is like a gray, not picture, the paper is like a gray color, which surprised me. It just surprised me. It doesn't actually look the way that it looks like it looks in videos. I don't I don't know any other way to explain it than that. I don't know if I just got like a different version and I don't realize it, but yeah. So that's the main textbook. And then I'm gonna scoot you off to the side. Uh, you're gonna get the instructor's guide and this is in my opinion uh, what you're paying for. If you get any of this and you don't get this, you're not getting your money's worth. You just get this and you don't get any of this, this is, you could build it all just out of this if you wanted to. Uh, you don't even need that, honestly, if you have that. Just using, <laughs> I mean, I don't know why you wouldn't get this, but you could just buy the instructor's guide and it would be enough. Uh, for you to instruct your children. So this doesn't have anything in it at all uh, for kids. It doesn't have, um, I don't think it has any answer guides in it, honestly. I think it just has like the maps in the back. Uh, but it's gonna give you uh, hands-on activities. It's gonna give you a Minecraft activity for each one. It's gonna give you uh, reading suggestions, map work, uh, cross-references for spine books. Um, and it will give you a list of like the vocabulary in each chapter. Yeah, Minecraft, build a stupa. And sometimes it has more than one hands-on activity. Uh, see, there's recipes. There's more than one recipe on here. A Greek salad and a baklava, I think is how you say that. I hope I said that right. I'm sorry if I didn't. <laughs> yeah, Minecraft, build a Greek uh Yep, not going to try to say that word either. I probably should have Googled how to say some of these words before I made a video. But this is, uh, I'm really pleased with this. I, I do prefer a curriculum that comes, you know, as open and go, but I, there's just so much good in here. And for this, I kind of like to that my kids aren't looking at all the activities that are listed because then they'll be like, oh, I want to do that, I want to do that, and I might not want to do it, so, um, yeah. And then I have two students' guides to snapshots of ancient history. I'll show you one. Uh, neither have been worked in yet. Um, but this is going to come along with, uh, you know, different maps to do map work. There's going to be uh, vocabulary work. There's going to be different coloring pages. So it's the same student guide. They don't have them like aged uh, in any way, but um, you know, an older kid could do the vocabulary while the younger kid is like maybe coloring the coloring page. So, and then one of the cool things is that the reviews in this are these fortune teller pages and it comes with a printout pack I have it over here of pages like this where you might not want to try to pull it out of this <laughs> you know it's not per peripherated or anything perforated I can't I can't talk to you guys it's like it's like 1 a.m. I'm trying to film while my kids are are mildly quiet right now 
Um, but yeah, so you take this out and you fold it up and that's how you do your review for your unit, which I thought was really fun. And then, this is just sort of my packet of extra pages. This PDF comes with this purchase of this and it's just all the pages that you might want to uh, print out separate. This is pieces to a game that you cut out and build later on, which I don't know much about. I'll, I'll try to include more of that um, when I do the, like my review instead of my, you know, my flip through right now. The last thing that came with this package of curriculum, it there's an option to get a lap book. I didn't get it. Uh, I felt like I had enough at this point. Uh, but this is Ted's Timeline Kit. This is a PDF. I just took this page and glued it to the outside of like a, a three hole prong folder. And it comes with all of these. Um, again, I'm having terribles focusing problems. Anyway, uh, it's like these really beautiful ancient uh, pictures of the pyramids and when they're built. It comes with these, you know, different people were born and you fill it in and, you know, stick it to where it goes. Now, after I joined like the Facebook group that go that is for Curiosity Chronos pulls, I saw that a lot of people actually print these out on like sticker paper and cut them out. And I was like, oh, that's a really smart idea. I wish I would have thought about that before I printed this out. But you know, the more you learn, I'm not going to do it now because I've already I've already put it together. Um, and then there are two different options for the timeline. You can do a wall timeline. Uh, or on like a a tri trifold poster board. I chose to go with the folder because it goes neatly onto our bookshelf. So it's got these different um, sections, math and science, art and literature, religion and philosophy, notable people, war and politics, empires and civs, so civilizations. And then these are the dates this way. So then you'll just put the little pages here. And it goes from uh, 3500 BCE all the way to 2075, uh, so CE, so past where we are now. And so that is everything uh, that I have that goes along with Curiosity Chronicles that comes with the set that I bought. The other piece of what I would consider um, more of a curriculum, this includes like lesson plans, is this Outdoor Geography by Herbert Hatch. This is a classic living book that's used commonly in Charlotte Mason schools. Uh, I don't know, it, it comes with 100 lessons and it's a really interesting book and I want to get through all of it. I don't know if we will necessarily this year um, because I just I have a lot going on. Um, but you know if we're talking about a river I will pull out the page on rivers and we will do that along with it. And so that's that. So I showed you guys these in my math video. These are the Warlord series written by Virginia Walton Pyogard. I hope I'm saying that right. And these are really fun stories. We've already done the Tangram one. I think it's the Warlord's puzzle. And they all tell this story uh, set in ancient China. And then they have an accompanying an accompanying activity uh, and they're all based in math so they're different math concepts um, and they give you the tools that you need to do the activity along with it so I have the whole series I believe I have the whole series I hope I got all of them if not and I find any more I'll let you guys know I love the <laughs> illustrations they're very funny 
Um, I don't, I'm, this is, this is a purchase I'm happy with so far. Yeah, this is the one that we did. So this is about 10 grams. It comes with this page in the back. And we made a copy of it, cut the pieces out, and the boys tried to solve the puzzle as we read the story. Um, I didn't know this. Uh, these are based on, like, the actual fables that are behind um, Tangram, so uh, it was said to have originated in China during the Tang Dynasty when an artist dropped a square tile that broke into seven pieces. So this story is about that that story. Um, so it's broken, it breaks into these pieces, and they have to put it back together or the warlord, as you can tell, will be very upset. And we enjoyed it. I have the Warlord's Puppeteers, again, um, these come They're beautifully illustrated, they're really fun stories, my 11 year old and my 4 year old enjoyed it, they all come with uh, a how to do an activity, this one's about ratio, um, yep, Warlord's Beads, this one's about efficiently counting, and so they make the like a prototype of a wreck and rack. And then it tells you how to make your own. This one's about a compass, the warlord's fish. Tells you how to make your own fish compass. Last one, the Warlord's Kites. I think this is uh, a geometry story. We have not done this one yet, if you can't tell. Yeah, so it tells you how to make your own kite. I really like these. If you purchase nothing else from this, I would probably say this series is the best. It's math, it's history, and it's fun, which is always great. So the next thing I'm going to show you, I'm actually going to hop over here because these are our spine books that I bought uh, to go along with Curiosity Chronicles and our study of ancient history. Oh, you know, I just realized that I forgot one, but when I get to it, I'll let you know. Uh, so the first one that I have is the Usborn Encyclopedia of World History. There are two, there's an Encyclopedia of Ancient History, but the Encyclopedia of Ancient History is literally just the Ancient History section of this book. So I went ahead and got the World History one because I figured it's a resource that we could come back to. I really, really like this book so far. We've gone through um, this section and some of the prehistory, like the dinosaurs. It's really, really... Um, interestingly written. It, it's got DK vibes. Um, I'd say it's busier than I would like as far as like it's kind of disjointed. Um, but it's still a really great resource. Uh, and it has oh, <laughs> um, here we go, here's some ancient history. So this is, is the farmers of the Nile Valley. Uh, Europe's first villages. So it goes all over the place. Palaces and tombs. So there's that. Uh, the illustrated book of myths. Uh, Tales and legends of the world retold by Neil Phillip. This is another one. I, I have not, aside from sort of reading a little bit of it, I haven't gone through this, so I can't really tell you how much I like it and how much I don't. As, from what I've seen of it, I like it. I don't know how much my four-year-old will be into this, but um, my 11-year-old will probably dig into some of this, especially if it sparks his interest. 
Okay, and this one, I forgot my other one. I got the DK Eyewitness for Mesopotamia. I also have um, DK Eyewitness for Ancient Egypt. So, uh, I'll do the flip through for this. I'm sorry, I forgot Egypt. Uh, it got stolen by my four-year-old because he's fascinated with that book. And he will make me read it to him at bedtime sometimes. Um, so I think it's actually in his room and not in my pile of resource books. I really, really enjoy DK books. Any DK book. I, 10 out of 10, would recommend. I don't think there's a bad DK book out there. I have yet to have encountered one. If you don't like it, you probably just aren't that interested in the subject. <laughs> but yeah. And honestly, DK books are a really great curriculum in and of themselves. If you just want to follow, you know, say you want to do a unit study on Mesopotamia, okay, well, you're going to start on day one, you'll just land between two rivers. The next day, you'll talk about the Sumerian city-states. Then you'll talk about their rulers. Then the story of writing. Then their gods and goddesses. Their city life, their country life, their death and burial. Like, it's built... You could just buy one of these, and that could be a curriculum in and of its own. I have actually done that before with DK books, so just always a good purchase. You can't go wrong with them. The next thing that I have is the Osborne Encyclopedia of World Religions. This is another one that I thought was a really beautiful book. I love... Um, I don't think there's any illustrations in here. I think they're all photographs. But they, oh wait, yes there are. As soon as I say that, we find the illustrations. But these are um, referential illustrations. They're not unique to the book. So. I really enjoy this. I enjoy learning about different cultures and religions. And it's really important to me that my kids learn about different cultures and religions as well. Sorry, picture caught me a little off guard. All right. Last but not least, this giant. This is a huge book. It's it's meaty. This is the Osborne Internet Linked Encyclopedia of the Ancient World. This book is no longer in print. It is a spine book for Curiosity Chronicles, but it is not in print anymore. It was a royal pain in the booty to find this book. Um, and when I did find it, I actually, <laughs> I couldn't find it in America. I had to find it in the UK and have it shipped overseas to here. And I am glad that I wasn't disappointed with it. Um, because like I said, I this was, this was a textbook. It looks like, yeah. Uh, the Lincolnshire County Council Education and Cultural Services. Maybe that's a library? I don't know. But this is, this clearly was a textbook for something somewhere. But it is packed, jam-packed full of all kinds of information. Like, it, you could teach, I think, a, a college-based, a college-level, um, ancient history class based off of this book. It's intense. Um, the Queen Who Became King. It is, yeah, it goes into a lot of detail. So if you have a kid who goes off onto side tangents, um, this is a great book to have around because if you don't want to necessarily go that deep into a subject with your other kids, but you have one that wants to, they can read deeper into it into in this book because it's thick. Yeah, this is it's got a list of all of the dynasties of ancient Egypt from dynasty 1 all the way to the Ptolemies. So like I said, it's thick. It lists every god of ancient Egypt. I like this. I'm I'm gonna have to go through and like tag all the map pages because I like these maps better than the little ones uh, that we have.
But yeah, so if you can find it, if you can't, I'm sorry, but if you can find it, this is a great resource book to have. The next thing that I'm going to show you is uh, it goes along with both our ancient history and our arthropods unit study that we're doing. Uh, this is Bees, A Honeyed History. This book is huge. This is the biggest book I think I've ever owned. It's so big it wouldn't fit on my bookshelf and I have to find, I have to like sit it out um, in like where I sit books on display because it's, it's giant. Like this is my hand, this is the book. It's huge. Um, but this is also a great resource for an ancient history study because the history of bees is ancient and long and this book is beautiful. Now the way this, these, most of the page is these big beautiful illustrations and then the actual text is like this thin line at the bottom. So if you see how big it is, don't necessarily get dis discouraged that oh I don't know if I could read like all of that it's mostly illustration there are these little tidbits on the page but they're not you know it's not too much the entire book is illustrated but I love these illustrations I think they're beautiful I'm trying to get to the actual ancient history part here we go so it goes through how beats in humans have coexisted and affected each other which obviously goes through ancient times and then it goes into medieval into more recent times so yeah love this book 10 out of 10 would recommend okay next I'm going to do this pile that I have here. Some of these books you will have seen in my math review or my math uh, curriculum picks for read alouds. I bought them because they were math related. They're related to the topics that we're studying this year but also because they're history related and we're doing a unit on ancient history. Um, so the first few books that I have here are Where is Stonehenge and Where is Easter Island. These are from the Who Was series. My 11 year old is obsessed with this series. Uh, he binges the show on Netflix. Every book he sees like this at the library or something, he has to get it, he has to read it. He's already read this. He stole it as soon as it came out of the Amazon box. He he yoinked it and read it. Uh, and so I'm sure he'll be through this one before we ever even get to these topics like in our study. Um, I, I don't know if anyone else has a kid that is obsessed with these books, but I think they're really great. They do a good job of giving your kids information in a way that they can internalize it and remember it. Okay, next I have Ramayana, Divine Loophole. This is an Indian myth, or a Hindu myth, I should probably say. Um, I, like, I am obsessed with this art style. I don't know if anyone else out there, I've seen people say that they don't like these, like, computer generated looking, um, sorry you guys, there's a helicopter flying overhead, uh, these, like, computer generated illustrations, I absolutely love them. I would love to see a movie made of this story in this art style. That's how much I love it. Uh, this is a thick book. It's probably going to take us a while to get through it. Um, even though there's not a lot of actual words on the page, it's mostly illustration, it's still a pretty chunky book. So, look at that, you guys. Look at it. I'll stop gushing over those illustrations. Next I have Mulan, the story of the legendary warrior told in English and Chinese. Um, this I bought, I am going to try to find someone saying Mulan, or the, because Mulan, I thought Mulan is like a poem uh, that most kids learn in China and 
I think it's like their elementary school or middle school, they have to memorize it. And so uh, I want to at least find someone reciting the poem so that my kids can hear the way it sounds in, I think it's Mandarin. Um, I'm not sure. See you guys, I'm showing my ignorance. I'm gonna have to look that up. So I know what I'm talking about when I talk to my kids. But I wanted to hear them hear the poem in the language it was written in so that uh, they can, you know, it can make a little bit more sense to them what it is in the context of Chinese culture because there is a Mulan in the context of American culture and then a Mulan in the context of Chinese culture. And I think that they have diverged a little bit um, especially since the Disney movie, which I'm not going to get into. <laughs> I'm not going to get into New Mulan. Um, but yeah, I'm excited for them to read that. Next, I have Euclid, the man who invented geometry. And this, I have already read some of it. It's a very funny story. There's lots of jokes. Um, it's a chapter book, but the chapters are super breezy to read. Uh, we probably will not, did, we could, I don't know if my four-year-old will sit still long enough to read this in one day, but we could probably read it in one day if we really, really wanted to. Next, I have Pythag Pythagoras and the Ratios. This is based on the guy who came up with the Pythagorean Theorem. Um, it's a picture book, but it's also got a lot of words to it, so I don't know. I would still put this in the category of picture book. I don't think it would take too, too long to read. I've got some some chunkier books coming up. <laughs> uh, next I have Mummy Math and Adventure in Geometry. This is uh, just to sort of tie in uh, the geometric shapes that we're learning with um, our Egypt unit. Uh, this helps ed children identify and name the solids they read about in the story. Collecting and sorting real solids is one good way to do this. Uh, they can build models, have children look at diagrams. So this includes like a teacher's note of different activities to do along with this book. But it's basically they, um, I think they have to escape and they have different have to find the different shapes in the form of clues. I, don't know. I thought it was a cute, cute little way to tie math and history together. Up next I have The Librarian Who Measured the Earth. This is a picture book uh, about Aristophanes. And I don't know much about him, so I will be learning right along with uh, my kids. I know that I plan on actually having my kids measure the circumference of the earth with me using the method that he used. Um, just to sort of show them, you know, this is this is how they figured it out. Uh, but yeah, so Yeah, and I, I don't think it's got too too much to it, but it's a storybook about both about history and about you know circumference. So I thought that was a good one. Next, I have the story of clocks and calendars. This is another one that is, uh, you know, where my four-year-old's in the process of learning about clocks, so it ties in really good with him and my older son will retain more about the history aspect and I also thought it was just really cool to see all the different methods that we've used to keep records across history. I think it's important to know how we came to be, you know. Um, I think a lot of people just assume like, oh, well, we've always ha we always have and we always will. Uh, but for most things, it's not true. The History of Counting by Dennis Schmant Besserat. I hope I said that right. I don't think I did. Uh, this is another, it's a picture book, but it is cram full 
of historical information. Um, just skimming through it, one of the coolest things is just learning how people have counted before. Um, I don't know how to explain it, but it's just one of those things where you've always counted the way that you count. And like I know about Roman numerals, uh, which is, an, I have another book coming about specifically Roman numerals. Um, it just isn't here in time, and I don't want to wait to put the videos out. Um, I'm saying um a lot. Sorry, guys. I This is one of the ones that I'm personally excited about reading. I, I was never taught stuff like the history behind why we use the numerals that we do. Why do we count on a 10 system? What did we try before that that didn't work? You know? Um, okay, so this last pile that I have for you uh, is the first thing is Aesop's Fables for Children. I got this from Lightning Literature, but you can get this literally anywhere. Uh, we've already been through a couple of these, and so far I'm really, really enjoying uh, going through the fables. I never studied these. My older son never studied these whenever he was younger. Um, it just, it isn't something that they do here in our schools. It's not really part of our culture to tell these types of fables. There are probably some other fables ingrained in Southern culture that we just don't think of as fables. Um, but as far as, you know, classics, uh, these, these are pretty good. So we have that. I also got Chinese Fables, The Dragon Slayer, and Other Timeless Tales of Wisdom. So as we get through uh, the ancient Greek fables, uh, we'll go through the ancient Chinese fables as well. Um, I will let you know when I get to the end and I start reviewing if anything particular stuck out to me, if I liked it, if I didn't. This one isn't as picture heavy, so I don't, it's still, I think it's, I would say it's probably prettier than that book. Um, or maybe I just, I, I probably just enjoy this art style more than I do that art style, but that's probably just me. Like, look at that. That's super cute. So there's that. Next I have Lugobanda, the boy who got caught in a war, an epic tale from ancient Iraq. This is one of the oldest stories in the world. Um, I know this is related to Gilgamesh. I think Lugobanda is his dad. That, I might be wrong. I don't really remember. I know that I had read this before though many, many years ago. Um, but this is a chapter book. It's got a lot to it. It is a picture chapter book, but it's still a chapter book and it's really long. So this is going to be a bit like, uh, Ramayana where we're probably, it's probably going to take us a minute to get through all of this. It's a lot. Uh, but... It'll be fun, yay! Next, I have uh, Paley and the Rivers of Fire. This is more of a, I see I bought it used, so someone wrote their name on there. Um, what's the word, oh, an Oceana um, ancient fable, or no, not fable. I think this is a mythological story. about a volcano. Yes. Sorry, you guys. I've bought so many books and I've done so many of these videos in the past couple of days that I am, I'm getting all jumbled up. I really, really like this um, illustration style. I am a sucker for pretty books. I really am. And I like I like books that teach you something about somebody else, so that's a fun one. That's not fair. Getting to know your rights and freedoms. This one 
It is extra exciting. So this tells you your human rights in the form of a picture storybook. Um, it's a little longer uh, and I'm sure that my four-year-old probably won't internalize much. He'll probably be, you know, playing with something while I'm reading this book. But my 11-year-old is the one that I really want to um, kind of dig into these concepts. What is a human right? What rights do human ha humans have? Why do they have them? Where do they come from? Um, yeah, so that's an interesting one. We are all born free. A Universal Declaration of Human Rights and Pictures. This is from Amnesty International. And this book is a photography picture book. Or no. I might be thinking of the, I'm thinking of the wrong book. Never mind. Uh, this is just a picture book. Yeah, okay, so. Sorry, you guys. Again, my brain is mush. Uh... This is another picture book about the 30 human rights. So we all have a right to life and to live in freedom and safety. Nobody has a right to hurt or tor torture us. Uh, that's a little gruesome. Everyone has the right to be protected by the law. The law is the same for everyone. It must treat us fairly. These are great ideals, right? <laughs> um, yeah, so this is a storybook that tells about all of the 30 human rights. Which I think, I hope that my children have memorized and I think is something that should be required to be included in all curriculum. But for some reason, it is not. This, These books coming in is the first time that I have ever actually learned what all the 30 human rights even were. So, um, it's definitely something that I want my kids to just always kind of know is a thing. Next, I have The First Dog. We have read through this book already. This is a really funny story about the domestication of the wolf. Uh, there's a character named Kip and Paleo Wolf. And Paleo Wolf keeps coming up for the bone, and uh, Kip keeps shooing it away, but the, you know, the wolf is warning him about all of these dangers. It's a really sweet story. I am partial to the domestication of the dog. I don't know why. I just think it's like a really sweet hereditary thing. Every time it's depicted, it, it, it gets me in the feels. So, uh, yeah, I, I like this book. Next, I have Archaeologist Dig for Clues by Kate Duke. This um, is a Let's Read and Find Out Science book. It includes a uh, like an activity in the back, but it just tells all about archaeologists and what they do. So. It looks like a fun book. This is more geared towards a younger audience. So, you know, bear that in mind. This is the book I was talking about. Uh, this is from National Geographic. Yeah, so the picture book is from Amnesty International. This one's from National Geographic, but this is the... Uh, there is a picture and then a human right. So every human has rights from National Geographic. So there's all of these really beautiful pictures, um, and it it literally just lists the rights on each page, and then there will be like uh, a quote, and then a description of a picture. I thought this was a really beautiful book. This goes along with me uh, really wanting my kids to understand what human rights are, uh, because why is that not something that we all know and understand in the way that we know and understand, you know, our multiplication facts? Yeah. 
and here is just them all listed out. That's like a reference guide. Okay. Almost done, I promise. Up next I have You Wouldn't Want to Be a Mammoth Hunter. I found so many of these the series that I want I we have yet to have read them I've heard nothing but good things about them we just have never read them I don't know how my kids are going to accept them and so I limited myself to only buying one seeing how we do with it if we like it then I might get more but it looks like it's just you know a really goofy way to give a lot of really meaty information it's got vocabulary words that go along with it um, goofy illustrations so we'll see I haven't we haven't like read through it all the way so I can't really tell you if they liked it or not if it worked or if it didn't but I've heard good things about this series so I limited myself to a mammoth hunter um, and I'll let you know how it does all right last one Moody's necklace the oldest story in the world this is an ancient Egyptian story about a girl whose necklace I think gets broken or something I'm not quite sure it's this is another um, it's an, it's a picture book but it's a really long picture book so um, I like the illustration I enjoy it when people depict Egypt in a different way than hieroglyphic art <laughs> um, because Egypt was more than that I don't know I just I like it I, I enjoy when people depict Egypt in a different way um, but yeah so that is the last book that I have there that is everything that we are using for ancient history it's a lot, but a lot of it will be, you know, just one day. There are a lot of different activities in Curiosity Chronicles that I am interested to get to. So... I will let you guys know how all of this works out. Like I said, I'm used to building my own unit studies, so I'm fairly confident that we're going to have fun. Um, all of the activities that I've seen so far in here look really great, and the beauty of the way Curiosity Chronicles is set up is if I don't want to do them, we don't have to do them. Um, so yeah, oh, the other thing that I meant to bring that is a curriculum, I got um, Art of the Ancients from Artistic Pursuits. I have a video up already about um, that, so if you want to check that video out, it includes um, a flip through of the book, or at least a brief one, as well as um, everything that comes in the art kits that come with the cur the yes the curriculum if you purchase it. So check that out if you are interested in it. Um, so we've got. Curiosity Chronicles in partnership with Art of the Ancients and all of my spine and uh, resource books and picture books and chapter books and math picture chapter books <laughs> um, and my fables I think we're going to have a fun year so if you want to see anything any more in depth um, or have any questions about anything let me know in the comments down below and I will see you guys later Bye.